Hey there, Ding Dongs. Welcome back to Superhero 101, the show where I, Sam Basher, break down all those little comic book questions that you've got swirling around in your brain. Today I want to talk about all the weirdest, the strangest, the most offensive, the what the fuck comic book characters that exist across all publishers. This list could consist of heroes. This list could consist of villains. Hell, I might even be on this list. God, I wish. How cool would that be? Anyways, here's my top 10 list. Let's hit the popular weedos first, starting with number 10, everyone's favorite drug addict supervillain, Snowflame. Snowflame's superhero ability stemmed from ingesting a little white powdered substance named cocaine. Apparently cocaine would boost Snowflame's strength and give him a higher tolerance for pain. Hmm. Sadly, during his debut against DC's new Guardian, Snowflame died in an explosion. Sadly, DC never revived the character. That's weird, huh? Number nine on the list goes to The Needle, a recurring villain in Marvel that has sadly been incinerated. Damn. The Needle has the ability to cause instantaneous paralysis in his victims just with his gaze. Cool power, but the reason for him being on this list is due to his weapon of choice. You guessed it, a three foot long needle. Ever heard of scraping the bottom of the barrel there, Marvel? One cool aspect of the needle, no, the weapon, not the doofus, was that at one point it was so strong it could pierce Iron Man's armor. That's pretty cool. Also, he had this gauntlet around his arm that could fire tiny needles at his enemies, which kind of makes my skin crawl when I think about needles hitting people. Also, he would sometimes sew his victim's mouth shut. <laughs> Moving on to number eight, everyone's favorite clone, Hatemonger. Debuting in the Fantastic Four, Hatemonger was a purple hooded villain whose master plan involved bouncing a laser off the moon to bathe the earth in some sort of radiation that would make everyone on earth racist. They don't write stuff like that anymore, unfortunately. Eventually, Hatemonger was shot and killed, and then it was revealed that he is, in fact, a clone of Adolf Hitler. Hell yeah. Number seven goes to Marvel's Ruby Thursday, the supermodel supervillain with a computerized orb for a head. The orb could transform into many different shapes like weapons and tentacles and such, you know. I would love for a whole line of comic book characters that are just slight variation of like restaurant names, like the Applebee's or he's like a villainous vegetarian who shoots bees out of his hands. Or like the IHOP. You come up with that one, let me know in the comments down below. What's the IHOP? Number six goes to the colorful he, she, the half man, half woman hybrid criminal. The female side would seduce the victim while the male side pummels and they both make off with the cash. Oh, and the he, she has no soul. That had to be made clear in the comics when they put her, him, in the electric chair. I don't know, man, it was a different time. That's not really an excuse. Let's go on to the next one, huh? Number five, Tar Baby was a mutant that secretes tar from its skin and then it got killed in a mutant concentration camp. We're just gonna... Move past this one, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Number four, the mutant maggot. First things first, I hate that word. It's gross. I hate the way it feels in my mouth. I just hate it. Maggot. 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 Also, this mutant has a hollow area where his digestive tract should be, and that's where two semi-intelligent maggots live. They crawl out and they consume things, and then the energy is transferred back into the mutant. He uses that energy to gain super strength, stamina, etc. That seems so goddamn convoluted and gross. Moving on. Number three, penance. Not so much weird, more Messed up. For those of you familiar with Marvel, this is actually the superhero Speedball. What caused this masochistic costume change? Well, long story short, Robbie Baldwin, aka Speedball, was partially responsible for the Civil War event. He was the cause of an explosion that incinerated an entire town. <laughs> Robbie's kinetic power seemed to have disappeared, but then he realized it could be triggered when he was under excruciating pain. So he installed 612 spikes into his suit that face him, and 60 of those pierce his skin, reminding him of the 60 children that died in that previously mentioned explosion. Talk about a downer. Number two on the list, Ice Cream. He was just in one issue, and his only mutant power was the turn into any flavor ice cream he wants. Oh man, it's like a kid's dream. Also, it sucks because he picked the name Ice Cream. You know, that kind of blows because it could have gone to someone who can like project screams from their pupils. As dumb as that sounds, that's a thousand times more effective than this bullshit. And finally, number one, Danny the Street. He's a street. A block, if you will, with buildings, pavement, etc., who can teleport and secretly infiltrate cities all over the world, bringing happiness to people. He's also transvestite. I don't, I don't, I don't know. We can call that progressive, probably. I was introduced to Danny in the New 52 Teen Titans, which he was sort of a member of. I don't know. Thanks, DC. He took an everyday down on his luck piece of pavement and turned him into a teleporting transvestite superhero. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. Take a note. Honorable mentions real quick, I'm gonna throw The Max in there. That comic was highly recommended by many of my coworkers. Floronic Man is a good one. Think Swamp Thing instead of being made of multiple plants, it's just marijuana. The Hemogoblin, the vampire that infects heroes with HIV, Jesus Christ. And I'm throwing Red and Blue Superman in there because why? Why do that? I know you're trying to stay relevant, but God, thank God those guys are 
And that is it from me, guys. What did you think? Which one of these was your favorite? Let me know down below. If you have any suggestions for what I should do for my next episode, hit me up on social media. I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, please. Subscribe for more content and share this with your nerdy friends. Thank you again. My name is Sam Basher, and I'll see you next time. Let's do one more backflip, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God, it's so much hang time. Who? Hell yeah. Now that we know that the Force is a metaphysical, spiritual, binding, and ubiquitous power, thank you for that one, Wikipedia. But a YouTuber by the name of Sufficiently Advanced created a real-life Mjolnir. I'm not being a dummy, I promise.